Okay, the, you now know, before we look at the other four trig functions, you now know the derivatives of, and just by, just by having learned them by, they, they come up so often, it y equals sine x, you know what the derivative of that is, or we hopefully, maybe, I mean last time it was the, okay, so derivative of sine was cosine, derivative of cos would be really nice if it was sine, but it doesn't work that way, right? It's negative sine. So it's almost a nice reciprocal relationship between those two functions, but it's not. If you go far enough, you end up back at sine, you know, if you keep doing second, third, fourth derivatives. We're going to look at the derivatives of the other uh, functions here, okay, other four trig functions. If you are taking Math 12 concurrently, you may not know what the other four trig functions are because you might think there's only one other trig function. We're, of course, talking about y equals tan x and the reciprocal trig functions. If you are taking Math 12 concurrently, there are three other functions. One is called, let's make some space here. One of them is called y equals cosecant of x. It's cosecant. And its abbreviation is CSC. Uh, there is one that's called secant of x. And then, yeah, we got sine and cosine. We got secant and cosecant. We've got tangent. We've got cotangent. I guess I'm doing the abbreviations over here, aren't I? Cotangent. These are just the these are just the reciprocals. So I should have left myself a little bit of space here. Cosecant. If I can make some space there. Cosecant x is 1 over sine x. It's the reciprocal. You don't have this button on your calculator because all you have to do is put this in. Maybe on newer calculators, I don't know, at some point they'll put them on there. Secant x equals 1 over cos x. I mean, the other way to think about it is, you know, you learned uh, sine is opposite <coughs> over hypotenuse. So cosecant is just going to be hypotenuse over opposite. It's just if, if you know that the sine of something is two-thirds, the cosecant is three-halves. It's just the reciprocal. You don't really need them for solving problems because you only need one that relates each pair of sides. You don't need its reciprocal as well. But for what we're doing here, you need to know these things, I would say. And cotangent is 1 over tangent. Mike has a question. I know, it would make sense if the names, like, like tangent, you mean tangent and cotangent? It just doesn't work that way, I don't know. I... Mike, you say math it, often these names, likely the, all six of these names weren't, didn't evolve all at the same time, right? I mean, the, the, the first ones are, ancient Greeks came up with those words, and likely these other ones came later, I would imagine, and kind of filled in the blanks, I guess, I don't know. CK, I, I mean, if you looked into the original definitions and the geometric definitions of these things, the secant relates to a secant line and the tangent relates to a tangent line and, and things like that. Um, for You just have to somehow kind of get it straight in your head. Although I don't I mean, for what we do, you're welcome to have a Math 12 formula sheet if that helps you remember them. So let's not worry about the remembering the names and things like that. We do want to look for the derivatives of these other functions. They aren't going to work as nicely and simply as these do. You are going to do this as an investigation. You might need your Math 12 formula sheet here. Well, for what we do here, I suppose you need that. And let me think. Do you need... Yeah, you need that... Uh, you probably need that tangent is sine divided by cosine. And you... Well, this is 
if you have the other two, you don't need this, but this is cos over sine. I'm not sure if you need uh, Pythagorean ones, but cos squared plus sine squared is is one. Yeah, you, you, I don't know how much you need the other ones. I mean, those those are the main ones. If they come up, if you if you need them, I would like you to work with one other person, okay? Work with a partner to divide the work. Don't work on the same ones. No, there's four. There's four. But one, one of you should do tangent and cosecant. One of you should do cotangent and secant. Two questions. I'm going to pause the recording this, but um, some of you stopped on things like this, which is fine. It's the derivative. It's an expression for the derivative. The only problem is if you try to use it later on, like you, the couple questions you did after where it says find the second derivative or if you're using it, it's going to make expressions that are fairly complicated, especially these two below here. If you if you stop on this and then you try to use that, it's more complicated than this because it's easier to have a, qu a product than a quotient. Um, so these have all been down, gotten down to the point. You're, you're going to have to just learn these. There's some patterns you can notice. Maybe the patterns aren't obvious with all the different colors here, but... Not, uh, but I, I mean, I like the different colors. But uh, this one is a negative, right? Negative cosecant squared. This one is positive, but they're both squared. It's you know the derivative of tangent is the one that goes with tangent uh, secant. You might know from grade 12. Secant squared, the one that goes with cotangent. And then this always looks sort of strange. I know that. The derivative of this involves the function itself, tangent times secant. And the derivative of cosecant is times negative cotangent, negative cotangent cosecant. After this, I'm assuming that if you need the derivative of secant, you can just write this. You don't have to go through this derivation of it. Okay? You don't have to go through unless, of course, you forget, in which case I'll say, well, I guess you better go back and figure out what it is. All right. Um, so you can, uh, at some point, whether it's now or later, write out some, write out there for yourself to try and check your memory on this, I guess, or test yourself what the derivatives of the f of the six functions are. Yep, just two seconds. This question is asking you to find tangent and normal lines for this. Uh, it's I, I put in that I wanted you to use n deriv because you'd have to go to your calculator anyways to evaluate what the tangent is, so we might as well use the numerical derivative stuff. Um, two derivatives here, I said two different ways, the short way and the long way. The long way is just find the derivative looking at that as a quotient. Okay. And uh, the short way is to change that first, to say if y is 5 divided by sine x, grade 12s would probably change. Like if they're taking math 12 right now and doing trig identities, they would probably change that to 5. Instead of 5 divided by sine, they change it to 5 times cosecant, right? So you can do it that way, and then that's going to be a bit quicker because you already know, or if you look back, what the derivative of cosecant is. I want you to confirm that they're the same, right? Confirm that the two sides are the same. And then here, this certainly is, if you write, you know, from the previous page, if you write down that the derivative of this is uh, the more complicated form of, what did I just say, secant? Like, if you write down this as the derivative of secant, it's quite difficult to then find the second derivative especially since you don't know the the chain rule yet we're going to get there eventually okay so it's it's easier if you write that as secant times tangent i'm assuming you could just say that this is secant x times tangent of x 
And then the second derivative, you need the product rule, of course. But it, if you know the derivatives of each of those functions, you can find that pretty easily. Okay? Uh, at that point, that's enough to do the next assignment. So, you know, after lunch, we can do that. I do want us to at least start thinking about the chain rule here. Because um, you can finish these questions later on. I better push stop here.